walls. They take a picture. You just see this like Mercedes drive up or whatever, some black Mercedes, and then he pulled up. Dr. Dre gets out. Dude, everyone just started clapping, get a standing ovation for that dude, and he just came, got his spot. They took the flick. He got back in his car, and he was out. Um, but that was legendary, you know? Um, the, the thing was that the photographer didn't allow anyone else to take photos. So none of the writers were allowed to take photos. We all had our cameras. Uh, we took photos before and after, but not during the actual event because they wanted that to be special, and it is. That, that photograph is in the Smithsonian. It, that, that photographer, I forgot his name, but he, he got the piece into the Smithsonian Institute. So, so that piece of, of LA history is, is from the Belmont Tunnel. Great history, man. Thank you so much. You also mentioned earlier that you actually attended the Slick and Hex battle. Did, that took place in the Belmont Tunnel? Yeah, so, so the, the very first battle was uh, at the Belmont Tunnel. And, um, you know, I remember, like, well, there was several battles. Here's the thing. Like, I remember MAK battled, uh, uh, was it WCA or KSN? I can't remember. There was battles all the time. It wasn't, it wasn't like, um, uh, it was something that happened a lot at Belmont, which was dope. But when Hex and Slick battled, it was, um, it was dope, but um, it wasn't like an event. It was just like they were battling, you know? Um, Slick had done this, well, I guess Hex did this like dope character, like a scorpion and this castle up on the hill. And then Slick came back with like a Medusa cutting the head off the scorpion or something like that. Some, you've seen the pictures. But, um, but the styles were just sick because no one else at that time knew how to paint the way Hex and Slick Hicks and Slick were just like, you know, heads and shoulders above any other writer in LA at that time. I mean, they had their style down. Um, it was unique. It was different. It was fresh. No one was doing characters like them at all. So it was, it was super dope. Um, but yeah, it was kind of like, you know, people were just down there checking it out. Uh, they were battling, but then, the, you know, other people were there too, Risky and uh, I remember uh, uh, Duke. And, and frame were there so there was other writers and stuff so I, I don't I remember being down there but I don't remember it being like an event I just remember like being like a battle but then what happened is they got serious and they battled like for real for real and that happened at the Levitt's yard which is in like Glendale uh, off the Alley River and when that happened that's when everything was different that's when everything changed because that was like prime time I mean, there was news cameras down there um, it was a big event. I mean, it was like a three-day, you know, the whole, they had rules to the whole game. It was like, they, I think they started on a Friday and had to finish on Sunday or something like that. They had like three days to paint. Um, and everyone in L.A. was going down there, everyone, and just checking them out and checking, them, checking the battle out. That was like a real, real battle because uh, of the, the size of it because it was like no one had ever done a battle where the news, you know, <laughs> news reporters showed up or, or actual judges, you know. Um, so that was sick, um, and that was definitely like one thing that elevated everything, because after that, the whole world, literally the whole world, knew about it. Because I remember going to Germany, and people were asking me, "Hey, do you know Hex? Do you know Slick?" Um, and that's that's that that just changed the game for LA and put LA on the map like nothing else. That was the one event I think that just changed LA for the better and put us on the map, you know. Was there a consensus winner who won the battle? Was it, was it debated? It was, it was heavily debated. Um, Slick said he didn't finish. Um, his, his piece was dope. I mean, he had the subway train with the crazy face coming out of the front. And then he, he'd always call Hex hoax. So he, he'd always, like, cap on him by saying, you know, calling him a hoax or whatever. But then Hex, man, he had, like, Freddy Krueger on top of Slick, like, cutting, it, you know, cutting them up. Um, and then, you know, Hex had some dope burners back then. And he had a nice wild style. I mean, for me, Hex won that battle. And at the end of the day, that's, that's how it went down was that Hex won. But, you know, there was a lot of debate. And it's kind of hard to be a judge and say that, you know. Also, Jim Pragoff, rest in peace, who wrote, uh, who co-wrote uh, Subway Art, uh, uh, spray can art, I'm sorry, spray can art. Um, he was one of the judges. 
And we became good friends over the years afterwards. Um, he'd come to LA a lot and, and ask me like, hey, what's going on uh, you know, right now? Who, show me some walls. And I'd show him walls and he'd photograph them. He was always documenting you know, uh, graph. And he told me like, you know what? I should have never been a judge. That was the worst thing I did because in my eyes, there is no winner. Everyone's a winner. And uh, he always felt bad that, that he chose Hex because he was like, I shouldn't have done that. And so he told me one time, like, if you see Slick again, tell him that I'm sorry that I shouldn't have judged that. He, he's a winner, too. And I, I think at one point I told Slick whatever, and Slick was like, ah, whatever, you know. But Hex and Slick, when that, ha when that battle happened in, you know, early 90s, whatever that was, 90, I don't know what year that was, 91, 92, whatever. When that battle happened, um, you know, all these change events happened with, with Hex and Slick, and they went their own, their own directions. And they didn't speak anymore. And they kind of became enemies in a sense because, you know, it was, it was a heavy thing to, to battle. Well, fast forward to 2012 at my gallery, Crew West Gallery, I gave Hex his first solo show at my gallery. And um, he had been out of the game for years. He had not painted and been out of the game. He came back and he was like, I want to learn how to get back on the game and what I should be doing and blah, blah. And, you know, he's one of my idols. He's one of the guys that I looked up to. So for him to call me and be like, yo, um, I want back in. Like, you know, help me out here. What can we do? Um, I said, you know what? I want, I want you to have a show. I want to see a Hex show, you know? And so at that opening, opening night, Slick came to the opening and, and gave Hex a pound and a hug and they hugged it out. And uh, I was like, damn talk about history that was like that was my whole like graph journey like in one night you know because like these are two guys that i looked up to since i was a kid when i got into the game saw them battling on the walls of la saw them go on their own journey and fall out and all this kind of stuff that happened all the way to being able to reunite them just to be like yo you know you're dope no no you're dope well we're dope you know and that was like that was it you know so that year i closed the gallery later that year and it was a perfect way to kind of close the whole, <laughs> the whole gallery thing because it was like, can't get better than that if you're talking about graph history, you know?